is he looking for? I'm dead. What was that? In the haunted woods is a haunted house, but this is no fairy tale. Welcome to Most Haunted. The woods around me are just one of the settings for the dramatic story of this week's location. Witchcraft, murder, robbery and human sacrifice are just a few of the things that are alleged to have happened here. This week, we're on the Essex coast, investigating one of the county's most infamous properties. And by spending 24 hours, we're hoping to uncover the truth behind the legend of Treasure Holt. There's been a building on this remote site since the 1100s. It's been a haven for smugglers, an inn of disrepute, a hiding place for the king supporters, and the scene of satanic rituals. There are supposed to be several ghosts here that have been seen on many occasions. Will the Most Haunted team come face to face with any of them? Now, who's going to be willing to spend 24 hours in one of Britain's most haunted locations? I hunted around, I rung a few people, and of course we came up with the usual crew, the happy crew. There's Mark smiling. They all seem very happy now, don't they? Yeah, you do. When the lights go off, it's a totally different story. When we moved in, it was a very bad winter. Uh, we slept in the back bedroom. The, the kids was in the front bedroom with, in sleeping bags. And one night, my wife woke me and she said, quickly, the, uh, a girl is, walk is sleepwalking. So I jumped out of bed and ran into the room. And we'd seen this uh, young girl walk across the room. But when I got in the room, the young girl was gone, but my daughter was still in her sleeping bag. And that's the first time we see um, anything at all. Some people make it their business to try and catch evidence of ghosts, and one of those people, of course, is Jason Carr, who's a parapsychologist. Now, what do you think about the story connected with Treasure Holt? Well, it's, it is, as you said, a story, and it's a very interesting story. It's a fantastical account of alleged happenings here. I think what's important here is that we concentrate on the actual sightings that have happened in the last 10, 20 years where the current owners have seen themselves. I think those are the important aspects, and perhaps ignore certain aspects of the story itself. Okay, so not to get too carried away with exactly. that. Exactly. Um, one of the things that was supposed to happen here, of course, was black magic. Uh -huh. Do you think that's true or not? Well, you use the term black magic. Again, the story uses the term Satanism and devil worship. Basically, it might boil down to witchcraft, which is a pre-Christian religion, the pagan religions, where people worship the earth and they used to dance around fires, as it says in the story. If that kind of worship or devoted thought happened on this land, then that might be um, a reason that psychics pick up emanations, because that devoted thought can leave, supposedly, a psychic imprint, and that's what psychics pick up on. So if you believe in that, then that could be why people have had unusual feelings here and feelings right. of presence. Now obviously it's not just the house, mm -hmm. we've already mentioned that of course it's the surrounding areas as well. Yeah. How are you feeling about tonight? What are you expecting to happen tonight with all of us? There have been reported sightings both on the track that leads from the main house down to the main road and also in this area and the lawns that are beyond of uh, two cavaliers or a cavalier and a roundhead rather fighting a duel and the, the phantom monk of Simon as the book says but the, the monk ghost and I was talking to the owner earlier on he's seen it but as he said, who's to say it's a monk? It was just a black figure, possibly robed, but he's associated with the monk legend. Now, obviously, he's seen something. Whether it's a monk or not, we don't know. Maybe we'll know tomorrow. Now, lots of people have seen things here and heard things. Now, is our psychic medium, Derek Akora, going to pick any of those things up? We'll find out when he arrives tonight. I was sitting downstairs with the wife. We were both reading. Um, and there was a whooshing sound down the side of the house. And when we looked at the window, Uncle Percy was standing there. He vanished up the stairs in the doorway that he put in because he used to use that doorway when he come back from the pub and didn't disturb nobody. We pulled it all down since, and there is a frame of a doorway that's all been blocked in. The ghosts that I've seen don't even know you're there, I don't think. They just, I mean, I, I front to front with a cavalier on the stairs and he just took no notice. It just happens. So whether it happens tonight or not, I don't know. 
Lots of things have happened in this particular room. For instance, in 1910, some human bones were found right here under these floorboards. Now, the ghost of Uncle Percy has been seen on many occasions, and he actually appears at this window. Then he walks through this room and goes up these stairs. Now, the strange thing is, we've done a little bit of research and we found out that there was a gentleman called Percy Haywood, and he lived here in 1917. If you look at these two windows here, you'll see that they're a lot lower than the first window. And my thinking is that maybe that first window was a door. Now, of course, every house has its own cavalier. And Charlie has got his. And apparently, he lives at the top of the stairs. If you hear a scream, will he come running? This is certainly a very higgledy-piggledy house. Now then, in this room, a lady wearing a crinoline dress has been seen many, many times walking through here. Now, very recently, somebody actually took a photograph of the outside of the house. When they had the photograph developed, they actually saw the outline of a person staring out of this very window. To help with our investigation, Jason was setting up a motion detector to hopefully capture the movements of the ghost of the crinoline lady. Basically, this is a very simple laser device, a bit like a burger alarm, and I had our uh, rigger Stewart design this and set it up for me. You can't see it with the naked eye, but there is a, a laser beam firing from this device to this device. Now, if I put the smoke machine on it, you can see it a bit clearer. And what I'm going to do is set this up in this room, and if anything crosses the beam, you heard that sound there, that will alert us and we'll come up and investigate. Now we're going to seal the room off so we can be sure that no humans have come in here. If a cat got in, there are several cats here, this is too high, the cats wouldn't be able to, to sort of break the beam if you like. Now the reason I've chosen this room in particular is because the crinoline lady ghost has been reportedly sighted here twice moving across the room. And also earlier on when the crew were setting up outside from the garden, one of them looked up into the window here and saw something move across the room. Now we're not saying that's a ghost, but the description of the clothing this figure had didn't match any of the crew members or anybody in Treasure Holt at the time. So if there's anything in this room, this device will catch it. Derek Akora, our spiritualist medium, had arrived. As always, the location was a complete mystery to Derek. So what will he make of Treasure Holt and its past? Well, I can see it's a very old house, a very old property. And um, with it being an old house, I, I'm expecting to pick up um, maybe activity. They may not be. They may be quiet and want to stay in the background. Who knows? I'm looking forward to going to the woods because we've looked at buildings before inside. I think looking at an exterior is going to be more exciting. There's more potential for things to happen because of a much bigger space. Having said that, there's a lot of natural things that can happen too, so I'm going to be very aware that it might be down to natural causes. I think I've got a reputation now for being quite hysterical, and what I want to do is to stick it out all night, be completely rational and objective, not freak out and prove every one of the crew wrong. With the long night ahead of us and several ghosts to contend with, will we find it all too much or will it be a walk in the park? Come into this um, large room, lounge, what have you, Avers. Psychically, um, I'm getting th these feelings of like pulling me sideways. Oh, look at this. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Can I say, my uh, talking to you, my view over in the corner, a monk. Let's get a bit closer, if. Oh, it's a and there's a, a monk here. He seems to be very, very um, keen to be looking in our direction. But Simon. Simon. He gives the name Simon. Is that the monk's name? The monk. There's a man here by the chair and a woman. And they're calling Simon. They're calling him. And they're talking. He's given them, um, it looks like this box or something that he's got contains 
jewelry, money, gold, and that it's like as if they pat them on the shoulder. Well done, and it's a man and a woman that um, run an establishment. You know, there's deaths on the site. There was deaths going way back here, caused by the man and woman. Oh, this goes back. Was that the 12th century? This man and woman who run this inn used to uh, ply them with drink. And when they were drugged with this drink or whatever concoction, and whilst they were asleep, these two, these two bad ones, the, the woman used to go in, not the man, the woman used to go in and, and take part of their money, their wealth, and they were bludgeoned to death. He hit them with a big stave on the head. While you're getting all this information, which is quite specific, you're getting a lot of information for the monk. Yes. Do you have any other information of where he's from or his surname or what? I know order? he's linked with the monastery and what Which he's done. Monastery? I don't know. I, don't know. I can't tell it's you just that. that I can't check the information without something okay. specific. Okay. Okay. But it's to do with this place here. Are you being led anywhere else? Because we're just staying in this one room. Yes. I think it'd be good okay. for you to have a good old look round. Yes. Okay. The history of Treasure Holt was slowly being unravelled. It was slightly unnerving to know that so much had happened in this strange, crooked house, and we knew there was more. I get a young lady comes here, and your hair is lovely and blonde and light. Her hair was even a lighter tone, and I'm getting the essence of her up here. But again, this is residual, and I'm just trying to work out time scale with this lady because she's got. A beautiful um, long uh, dress that's out here somewhere. Mm. Whatever they, you mm. know, they turn that sort mm. of dress. Who? Is that him shouting? Okay. Is he going to be? Where is he going to be? Downstairs. Okay. Derek was aware of hearing a man's voice calling to him from downstairs. We were all a little surprised to discover, according to Derek, it was the ghost of Percy. He's been seen on many occasions walking from one side of the house and through a wall where a door used to be, and he was now communicating to us through Derek. Where's the door? Where's the door? I know my door, and I can't see my door. I'm not telling you he's dead. Oh, because you might get all aggressive with him. Percy, uh, do you know you are dead? Who's dead? You're dead. I had a good love here. I had a good love here. What do you mean you had a good love? You had a partner here, or a wife, or a girlfriend, or what something? What are they whispering about? We've just got a battery that needs replacing. And I'm going to replace it. See, cameras don't last forever. They die like you've died. Oh, I'm not dead. Silly. If it's to be believed that Percy was communicating through Derek, it seems sad that he refused to believe he was dead. And who knows how long he would remain trapped in a house he once knew so well. We thought now would be a good time to switch to night vision and see if the darkness would entice any other ghostly residents. Back upstairs, we went to the room where the lady with the crinoline dress liked to walk, but was it her ghost that was making a lot of reported noises? You say, just before we came into this room, that you yes. were picking up the essence of a little boy. A little boy. Yeah. And I feel like this little boy comes here. I'm not totally certain yet whether he is um, constantly here but I'm getting visitation, and I feel at the times of the knocks and the bangs, the emanations would be caused by the little boy. He's not in any way a bad, evil child or anything. I feel as if he clings on to here um, with love. Do you know who the little boy is? His name's Michael, but people called him Mikey. How old is he? Five and a half, six, mm. that's all. He wouldn't have reached seven. 
I feel he had um, conditions to, to his physically broke out in um, this terrible, terrible um, rash and um, it made his face and his glands here swell, high temperatures. And I saw someone stroking his head, that was a woman's hand, and a very high fever. He died Scarlet with fever. Scarlet fever. It's a fever. It's a fever. With so many ghosts dwelling in a house with such a history, Jason wanted to try a contact experiment with a few members of the crew. By sitting quietly and linking hands, would anything or one make their presence known to us? If there is anybody there, give us a sign that you can hear me and understand me. If you can knock, knock once for yes or twice for no. Is there anybody there? I'm very, very cold. I feel it, I feel it all over my legs. I feel it the side of my face. But was it there before? Or no. is it just because no. it's my coat? No. Is on? Thank you, we acknowledge your presence by giving us these signs, but can you give us something stronger? If you're causing this breeze that I'm feeling... Orb on this camera. Really? Where's it? Can you tell me where it went? It came from behind Stuart and towards Bev. Is there anybody here? Please, we really, really want to make contact with you. Well, that, that breeze is now very, very strong. It is, isn't it? You, very strong. you feel it now? Yeah. I, I can feel, feel it. It's hands. getting stronger. Oh, yes, it is. It is it's getting right stronger. across my legs. <gasps> Yes, I thought that was you breathing. Oh my god. It was a cold blast. Oh, was it on your left hand? In my face. Oh, right. I'm getting really frightened now. Don't be oh, frightened. Oh, uh, yes. It's like a... Like a like blast a... of cold air. Yeah. I thought, that's so strange, I thought it was something exhaling. It's almost like someone's opened a freezer door and it's just again and it's yeah. happening infrequently. Mm, that's that's exactly that. what it's like. Yeah. It really has gone a lot to cold... Oh, it feels... Orb it's again. Colder. Again. It came from, again, from Stuart and it's heading this way. And a back. It's gone back exactly where it came from, back towards Stuart's knee. So it's come over towards the camera and then and it went back, back again. Us. Yeah. In the short time we spent trying to communicate with any spirits, we had caught on camera three orbs, which are said to be the first manifestation of a ghost. This particular orb seems to flicker, which is thought to be fluctuations of energy through the sphere. Apart from these, everyone experienced a drop in temperature, but just how much? We're just going to check the temperature gauge to see what the minimum and maximum was throughout that period. It started off at 17.4, which is what it was when we, when we began the seance I checked. And it went up. And it's gone up to 18.6. No. I was freezing. But it's interesting that it's gone up when we experienced it going down. It was time to do battle with the cold and our fear, as we had to go into the woods. A lot of ghosts have been seen wandering aimlessly around at night, and Charlie seemed a little nervous about us venturing out. I'm not going outside because it might be Uncle Percy getting the hump. What do you mean, he get the hump? Well, I don't know. I don't know. What is he looking for? A small group of us went outside. Jason, Marcel the makeup lady, Bev the director and myself. This was the moment that Marcel wanted to prove to the rest of the crew that she could walk through some haunted woods without becoming hysterical. This is where the um, sighting of the two cavaliers has happened, or the cavalier and the round head fighting on the lawn. This is where it's meant to occur. Remember, there's wildlife out here. <laughs> I've got to say, I'm back in that... <laughs> that was the wildlife. Come back with the torch! <laughs> nice start, Marcel. <laughs> the pheasants taking off from the undergrowth had managed to cause Marcel to lose her sanity yet again. As we walked deeper into the woods, our laughter slowly died away and was replaced by unexpected fear. This wasn't so much fun anymore. Oh, my God! Wait, 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 what? It's footsteps. What did you say? Shh. I can hear footsteps. No footsteps. No, that was flapping over No, there. it wasn't. I heard some footsteps. What was that? What was that behind you? No, listen, everyone, that listen was a whooshing to me. noise. Listen to me. All stay together. If you get scared, don't run off. Stay together. Yes, absolutely. I'm petrified. Did you hear that? No. Behind I'm, you? No, I'm not looking either. 
Jason, it's all right. You're okay. It's all right, Marcel. Listen, we're don't all run off. Here. We're all together. I'm not here. going to run off. I'm not going to leave you. You should have more faith in me. That's where I heard it from before. It's probably an animal, but it yeah. didn't it sound it. Please, can we go inside? Do you want to walk back? Yeah. What's the bearings? Which way? That way. Um, no, that way. Inside the house, in the room where the motion detector had been set up earlier, something had been caught on our locked-off night vision camera. We had caught something very similar on another location, Killane Castle in Scotland. Could they be the beginnings of a ghost manifestation? We don't know. But what we can say is they will definitely cause a great deal of interest in the paranormal field. The sales experiment that we did was interesting. At the time, we all seemed to feel temperature variations, breezes, people touching our hair. Now, we had a temperature gauge there registering the temperature. It didn't register a drop, quite the opposite. It registered that the temperature went up. Well, at times, it can be a, a very good vehicle. And provided that the sensors run in a, uh, a disciplined way, you can get great results. Treasure Hall is a fantastic story. It's a ridiculous story in a way. So you've got every kind of ghost you could possibly think of here and they've been massively embellished, I'm sure. There are probably some seeds of truth in it. Um, but having said that, there are contemporary sightings and those, I think, are what we need to remember. The monk or an image which might be a monk has been seen, a lady in a long dress has been seen, and also the cavalier has been seen. The ghosts, the, the spirits that are here, are people, again, that have had um, a great deal to do with the, the building. So it was lovely to experience. Well, how many times do you get the chance to spend 24 hours in a haunted house, be involved in a seance, walk through haunted woods and watch a medium be in contact with the dead? Well, that's all in a night's work for most haunted. We shall see you on the next location. In the meantime, sleep tight. Again. Well, it's like footsteps, but not crunching on anything like like hard footsteps. 